Greg rules, okay? Well, a wing a ding a ding a ding a wing a ding a ding a ding a wing a ding 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 Jesus, dude, how do you do this so long? 1987 Tomos Golden Bullet TTLX. This is a Slovenian moped. Two strokes, oil injected, 49.9 cc's. Third generation A55 single cylinder engine. Two speed automatic, using a wet centrifugal clutch. Top speed? 35 or 40 miles an hour. Tomo sold these motorized bicycles, that is their legal definition, beginning in 1976 and into the 1990s within the United States. These little bikes were most popular in the late 1970s when us Americans were still adapting to a post-oil crisis world. Mopeds go slow enough that wind resistance doesn't become an escalating problem. Wind resistance starts ramping up at about 30 miles an hour, so these bikes get about 100 miles per gallon. Imagine driving a 1971 Chevy Vega with its 2.3 liter four-cylinder not getting the 28 miles per gallon motor trend said you would. That would make these little spitting oil burners look pretty good to you. Not as a replacement for your car, but as a part-time augmentation for errands and work if all you have to do is in-town commuting, where speeds rarely get above 40 miles per hour anyway. We saw the same thing happen during the 2008 recession. Remember how all those little Chinese 50cc scooters showed up everywhere? You don't need a license? And they're only $2,995 brand new? I'm beating the system. Then in 2009, half of them broke. But Tomoses didn't. They're still being manufactured today, and the old ones still work as well. But state-by-state -state emissions laws make it hard to own two-strokes these days. But in Pennsylvania, no problem. Tomos makes their own engines. Oil is mixed with the gasoline within the carburetor, but most people who own Tomoses use premix anyway because the mechanical fuel pumps never get the oil to gas mix just right and matt who owns this moped and the rest of this club block off the stock oil pumps for that reason this tomos is currently being fed by a 16 millimeter delordo carb and that's bigger than the stock 14 millimeter carb giving this moped about two horsepower the wheels are cast aluminum and you kick the engine over by pedaling backwards for such a small engine, you think it would rev high, but it doesn't. This has a 6,000 RPM redline, but again, it's a two-stroke. Every other stroke is a power stroke, and you can kind of, I know this isn't a completely accurate description, but you can kind of think of this 50cc 6,000 RPM two-stroke having the same power as a 50cc four-stroke running at 12,000 RPM. In the 70s and 80s, most Tomos mopeds were sold at bicycle shops, looking to capitalize on panicked motorists, clueless and scared that, oh, we're entering the no-fuel end times. Just like 2008, when suddenly everybody's swollen, bellied, barbecuing, buying-on-margin uncle became a scooter salesman. They rented some collapsing shack on Route 309, bought five Chinese no-name scooters, which looked like coin-operated stationary grocery store rocket ship rides, and called their new business something like Thrift Fuel Motors. And then your boxer beer uncle sits at his office desk, which is really just a kitchen table he got from the free section of Craigslist, and he's got a Dell Dimension desktop computer with no internet connection, a mouse with no scroll wheel, photos of motorcycles, are stapled to the walls of the shack, but they're really just inkjet printouts on computer paper he made at home. A D-cell portable radio is tuned to 99.9 .9 The Hawk, your home for classic rock, and he's eating stromboli with too much sauce and drinking gas station green tea straight from the jug. And he stands to greet you when he walks in with vodka on his breath and a piss stain on his trousers. I'm a businessman. I'm diversifying. I can see the future. These are good bikes. These are good bikes. This is the future. These are good bikes. Everybody's gonna be riding these. These are good bikes. All sales final. Why buy a Chinese scooter? Hell, why, why buy a Honda Metropolitan for a few thousand dollars when you could have a Tomos for 400 bucks and go faster? This was a fun day, riding with this club. Okay, I pull out with the rest of this moped club 
wondering how well my HJC helmet, Revit jacket, and armored overpants were going to pad me from a distracted Toyota Camry driver. I am at full throttle, full bees, trying to join the cager parade. Nope, pull over. All of us are riding the shoulder. That's a legal move in Pennsylvania. We're not splitting lanes, we're low-powered motor vehicles yielding to faster traffic. Now, this only works on state roads and U.S.-numbered highways. Interstates are off-limits to mopeds. At traffic lights, we had to join the main part of the road again. And then the light turns green, and some of us pedal a little to help the mopeds accelerate. Never has it been so much fun to be so underpowered, especially on back roads. A big thing of this day was the camaraderie and safety of riding in a group. Ride by yourself and you're a jerk with blue smoke. But in a group, you're punk rock and this was amazing. I've never been on a ride where everyone is screwed on full and the joy is you're actually moving. I get home from this ride and immediately start typing in Tomos on Craigslist and there they you see them. The, the most expensive ones are maybe a thousand dollars. The rest of them are like 500. Because some of them look weird. They don't really look like motorcycles, although the one I was riding did have turn signals. But they're not hip. They're not hip like a Honda Metropolitan. They're not butch like a Honda Ruckus. And they're not super fashionable like a Piaggio or a Lambretta or a Vespa. Are they all owned by the same company now? Tomoses are for moped owners who actually want to go fast. They even had some race ones here in the collection. Ones that will do a terrifying 50 miles an hour. The pistons are about the size and shape of a shot glass. And it's moving my 170 pound frame, plus the weight of itself. The sound of a two stroke is like scrap. It's acquired taste. <laughs> For like one Metropolitan, you could have like two or three of these things and save them for where your friends come over. And everybody would understand them because the riding position is a bicycle. I mean, you have one foot in front of the other. You understand, okay, pedal for a little bit and ride it like a bicycle and then pedal backwards and this engine kicks on and off you go. You can put, uh, you can put bicycle tires on these 20 inch wheels if you want to. But that's not really that smart. Bicycle tires aren't meant to handle the heat of going 30 miles an hour all the time. You need dedicated moped tires. And you do have to have insurance on these things. Commonwealth of Pennsylvania recognizes that mopeds still fall into the motor vehicle category. So you have to have registration, you have to have a title, you have to have a license plate. It's everything involved with owning a motorcycle with the exception of the motorcycle license. But you do need a driver's license. I'm having more fun on this than I am on a Hayabusa. I hope I'm not single-handedly driving up the prices of Tomos mopeds. But wow, these are fun. Can you wheel with it? Can you wheelie with them? I don't know. Can you wheelie on a BMX bike? <laughs> That's kind of where the riding position is. These aren't very big. And believe me, 40 miles an hour is all the faster you really want to go. Whoa, corners are weird. Because it doesn't have the reassuring weight that a full motorcycle does. You ever, you ever ride down a hill too fast on a mountain bike and you're like, oh, 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 oh. that's what it's like taking a corner on something with an internal combustion engine, but it's still almost as light as a bicycle. I think motorcycle insurance for these will probably bottom out around where a 250 is. So mm, I'm in my 30s and my part of Pennsylvania, it cost me $75 a year to insure like a 250 if I had one. So count on somewhere between there and $100 a year to insure a moped. $100 a year in, in basic liability insurance. Man, if you were living in the city, didn't really have a car, this is, this is, this is nice. Well, a city that allowed two strokes, right? To get any real kind of power out of these things, you have to de-restrict them and then they get loud. And then they all make this weed whacker sound. So I guess you need strength in numbers. Brakes, very bad. <laughs> they're about as strong as bicycle brakes, even though they're drums in here. Some people put dirt bike uh, disc brakes on here. Some people actually get, uh, you know, like a master cylinder on here and make it work right. Some other people had some digital components working on this thing. These are some of the most customized, customized machines I've ever seen. 
This was a fun day. I want, I want more of this in my life. Some of these bikes never came with turn signals. Hand signals are legal in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. You can use them. If your motorcycle, if this motor vehicle never came with indicators, it is legal to use hand signals. If you live in a small town, it may be due diligence to at least talk to a police officer and get the full laws surrounding these in-between gray area motor vehicles before you go and get one. Plus, if you talk to an officer and develop a rapport, they'll probably know you and not be confused when they hear wing going through town. All right, that's it. I'm going back and looking at Craigslist again. Have a good week. Oh, when the clock strikes one and then my moped goes and then I hit the road with all my moped bros and no girls. That's what I want. Wing-a-ding-a-ding-a-hoo. <gasps>